In the last uh, couple of videos, we looked at the symmetric group on n letters. We saw how to represent uh, permutations, which are elements of S n, as cycles, and we learned that uh, any permutation can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. And we also saw that any permutation can be written as a product of transpositions, which may not be disjoint. We saw that uh, a cycle of length k has order k. And if you have a product of disjoint cycles, the order of the product is simply the LCM of the individual orders. So these are the various things that we have done in the last few videos. I want to now spend more time on writing a permutation as a product of transpositions. So if you recall, one of the examples from, uh, from the previous video, we wrote the permutation 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. And we saw that this is same as 2, 3, 2, 5, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 1, 5. Okay? So this is the same permutation, but on the left hand side we have a product description which has which requires three transpositions. On the right side we have five transpositions. Okay, I, I remarked the, on this last time the description as a product of transpositions is not unique and even the number of transpositions that is required is also not unique. We have 3 here, we have 5 here. However, what is unique is whether we need an odd number of permutations or transpositions or even number of transpositions. So this is one of the examples we saw. Another example we saw was if you take the 3 cycle 1, 3, 2, this can be written as 1, 2, 1, 3, this can also be written as 1, 3, 3, 2. Okay? So here we need two transpositions. In this also we need two transpositions. So both even. Of course in this case it is both 2. In this case these are both odd even though it is 3 and 5. So the theorem that I want to prove in this video and it will take me some time to prove this. Uh, we will do various examples to understand the proof and then I will prove. The theorem is uh, informally if you want to say the theorem it says that if a permutation is a description is a product of transpositions in two different ways the number of permutations the number of transpositions required in both the things have same parity so they are both even or they are both odd so let me write this more precisely mathematically how do we write this let me write it like as follows let rho be a permutation so I am going to use a new Greek letter because I am going to use tau and sigma to denote transpositions. So rho, you read this as rho, R H for rho. Okay, so let this be any permutation. Suppose it has two representations. So let suppose that rho is on the one hand, it is sigma one, sigma two dot sigma k on the other hand it is also same as tau 1 tau 2 tau t okay where these are all transpositions sigma 1 through sigma k and tau 1 through tau t are two cycles remember transpositions are just another name for two cycles so what is the situation we have a fixed permutation rho and we have written as one fashion sigma 1 through sigma k another fashion as a tau 1 through tau t certainly we cannot say k equals t but what we can say is that then both k and tau uh, sorry t k is the number of sigmas tau is the number of taus ok so let me remove the word b uh, both here so then k and t are both even or both odd. So in other words what I am saying is that they one of them they can't be one can't be even the other odd or that is not possible either both are even or both are odd as illustrated in this example here you have 3 and 5 both are odd 
2 and 2 both are odd okay so you can have both odd or both even so the rest of the video is focused on proving this theorem it will take uh, some setup so i'm going to slowly introduce to you the techniques involved so this is not so easy to prove though it would be as we proceed with the proof you will hopefully follow the proof and it makes sense to you but the proof is somewhat lengthy so let us systematically prove this the goal of this video is to prove this theorem okay so i will systematically and slowly go through the proof so in order to prove this let us introduce a polynomial so let us introduce a polynomial okay so if you are not very familiar with the notion of polynomials don't worry about it we don't need a lot about them it is just a formal thing and i will do enough examples to make it clear so i am going to call this polynomial f x1 up to xn so think of x1 through xn as variables or variables or indeterminates so think of them as just meaningless symbols okay they don't have any meaning they are just symbols so i define this to be the following so i will start with x1 i'll subtract from it x2 then i'll subtract from it x3 x1 minus x2 x1 minus x3 i will do it all the way up to xn okay so x1 minus the rest one by one then i'll start with x2 okay and i'll x2 to the right of x2 there is x3 so i'll start with x3 x2 minus okay so if to basically what we have is x2 minus x3 x2 minus x4 and up to x2 minus xn all the way and i i finally have xn minus 1 minus xn okay so this is the polynomial and formally if you write compactly if you want to write this this is written like this we take disjoint a uh, product this symbol stands for product you you are all familiar with the summation sign this is just the product sign we take i and j distinct i less than j i can be anything from 1 to n minus 1 and j can be anything from 2 to n right i can't be n because if i is n there will be no j j must be strictly more than n i similarly j cannot be 2 because j must be strictly more than 1 so this is the product so for any pair of indices where i is less than j you introduce a term xi minus xj okay so uh, and remember n is fixed in the theorem we are working with the symmetric group on n letters n is any positive integer we don't want to work with a specific one the theorem works with any positive integer but as an example what would be x x1 x2 say x f of x1 is just uh, that doesn't exist you there is no there you don't have two indices like that if you have n equal to 1 so f of x1 x2 would be simply x1 minus x2 there is just one pair of indices 1 and 2 what would be f of x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 would be you take x1 minus x2 x1 minus x3 so starting with x1 you take every other index 1 uh, 1 is fixed so 2 and 3 and then starting with x2 you take every other index and then is there anything else no so here you have three here you have i equal to 1 j equal to 2 were the only possibilities here you have i equal to 1 in this case j equal to 2 or 3 when i equal to 2 you have j equal to 3 okay these are the three possibilities so there will be three terms in the product so this is x1 minus x2 times x1 minus x3 times x2 minus x3 Similarly, I'll write one more, and hopefully it will become clear to you what is the polynomial 
it's a it's an expression think of it as an expression involving variables x1 x2 xn so here for i equal to 1 for i equal to 1 you have um, for i equal to 1 you have j equal to 2 3 or 4 right so for i equal to 1 you have j equal to 2 3 or 4 so you have x1 minus x2 x1 minus x3 x1 minus x4 okay so what about j equal to uh, i equal to 2 so you have i equal to 2 j must be bigger than 2 so j is 3 or 4 so you have x2 minus x3 x2 minus x4 and then i equal to 3 then j must be 4 so you have x3 minus x4 right so these are the six terms so this polynomial for x1 x2 x3 x4 will be these six terms and so on now you can think of what x1 x2 f of x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 would be it will be x1 minus x2 x1 minus x3 x1 minus x4 x1 minus x5 and so on so this is what f is now what i want to do is i want to take an element sigma in sn okay so sigma is just a permutation on n letters and i want to define sigma star of f as follows so sigma star of f will be so f is remember this sometimes i don't write uh, uh, the variables so we have so re, uh, f is the product x i minus x j 1 less than or equal to i and i is strictly less than j and j is less than or equal to n so sigma star f i will define so i'm going to modify f so sigma star f is a modification i'm going to change f a little bit of f using sigma okay so think of it like this sigma star f is simply a modification using sigma how do we modify remember what is sigma sigma just is a permutation of the letters so what i'll do is i will continue to take the product over a pair i comma j i strictly less than j but instead of x i minus x j i will have x of sigma i minus x of sigma j okay this might seem somewhat uh, mysterious but it is not so i just want to um, make it very clear to you because it's important to understand what sigma star f is uh, before we proceed so what is sigma star f i am going to start with f and modify the indices based on sigma so as, as an example okay so let's suppose that f of we take two variables so then so take n equal to 2 so then f is simply x1 minus x2 so if you take now we are dealing with s2 right so n is 2 s2 is just two elements e and 1 2 this we have seen the order of s2 is 2 factorial right and uh, which is 2 so it is e and 1 2 so if you take for any sigma we can define so let us compute this in these two cases e star f is this is a compact way of writing x sigma i minus x sigma j but if you spread it out what would it be e is identity element so nothing changes so you have x e of 1 minus x e of 2 but e of 1 is 1 e of 2 is 2 so this is just x1 minus x2 which is just f right on the other hand what is 1 2 star f so this is x 
Okay, so the, it's confused. Now it's easier for me to just use the letter sigma. So then this is x sigma of 1 minus x sigma of 2. See, when I write sigma of i, remember, sigma is a function from 1 through n to 1 through n. So, sigma of i is simply the image of i, okay, under sigma. So, when I write sigma of i, I am actually thinking of sigma as a function. So, what is, what is the image of 1 un, under sigma, which is 1, 2? It is 2. So, it is x2 minus x sigma 2 will be x1. So, this is not same as f, right? This is actually minus f. So, here we have changed the sign x1 minus x2 becomes x2 minus x1. So, this is what happens when n equal to 2. Let us do n equal to 3. Okay. So, here what is f? Here f is x1 minus x2, x1 minus x3, x2 minus x3. Okay. And here s3, remember has 6 elements. So, they are e, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. Okay. Let me do not all of them, you, but to illustrate the point, let me do sigma equals 1, 3 for example. What is sigma star f? So, you, you start with f and you keep the order, but you just change the subscripts and see what happens. So, it would become x sigma 1 minus x sigma 2. So, I am looking at f here, x 1 minus x 2 that becomes this. x 1 minus x 3 becomes x sigma 1 minus x sigma 3. And finally, you have x sigma 2 minus x sigma 3. Uh, Benjamin, so I actually touch this, but uh, it's okay, it's working. I okay. So, you cut this. So, sigma star f is x sigma 1 minus x sigma 2 times x sigma 1 minus x sigma 3 times x sigma 2 minus x sigma 3. But now let us actually compute these things. x sigma 1 remember is sigma is 1 3. So, this is x 3. Sigma 2, what does sigma do to 2? Nothing. So, it is 2 is fixed by sigma. So, it is x 3 minus x 2. Sigma 1 is 3. So, this is x 3 minus sigma 3 is 1. So, this is x 1. Sigma 2 is 2. So, this is x 2 minus sigma 3 is 1. So, this is x 1. So, sigma star is x 3 minus x 2, x 3 minus x 1, x 2 minus x 1. And what is this? This is how do you compare this with f? So, every term remember here is switched x 1 minus x 2 became x 2 minus x 1, x 1 minus x 3 became x 3 minus x 1, x 2 minus x 3 you have x 3 minus x 2. So, you have minus minus minus. So, this is minus f. Is that clear? Sigma f is minus f because sigma f is a product of 3 terms. Sigma star f became those 3 terms are interchanged. The order in which we take the 2 terms in x 1 minus x 2 is interchange. So, that becomes minus. So, this is minus f because this is minus. Okay, So, I mean I. So, this is minus x 2 minus x 3 minus x 1 minus x 3. This is minus x 1 minus x 2. Right. And so, this is minus f. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1 and then you have just f. So, sigma star f is f. Let us do one more example. Let us say tau equals 1, 2, 3. That is another element of S3. So, tau is 1, 2, 3. So, what is tau star f? Same thing. So, f is the same process. Uh, it will be different than uh, the answer will be different, but the same procedure we must follow. f is x1 minus x2 x 1 minus x 3, x 2 minus x 3. So, tau star f will be x of tau 1 minus x of tau 2, x of tau 1 minus x of tau 3, x of tau 2 minus x of tau 3. Right? So, this should be 
tau 1 is 2, tau 2 is 3, so x2 minus x3, tau 1 is 2, tau 3 is 1, so this is x2 minus x1, tau 2 is 3 and tau 3 is 1, okay, so this is x3 minus x1, so now how do you compare this with f, f has 3 terms again, remember that f has 3 terms, x1 minus x2, x1 minus x3, x2 minus x3. Here we have those three terms, but unlike in the previous example, one of those terms has not changed. x2 minus x3 remains x2 minus x3, but the other two things we have interchanged. This and this have changed signs. Right? Because it was x1 minus x2 in f that has become x2 minus x1. It was x1 minus x3 in f that has become x3 minus x1. x2 minus x3 remains as it is. So this is actually just f because this is minus of that term times minus of that term. So minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. So tau star f is f. Okay. So what I want to now say is that and I hope you agree based on these examples. So now if for if now I am going back to the general situation if sigma is a permutation in n, a, Sn then sigma star of f is either f or minus f ok that is what we found in these examples right it becomes either f or minus f uh, of course doing examples is not a proof of this the examples are supposed to give you an idea of why it must be true and how to prove it. And what is a proof? So I won't write this uh, uh, in detail because it's uh, becomes it's easier if you think about it yourself and try to write down a proof. But I will give you an I basic reason why this must be true. Because remember, f was product x i minus x j. Okay, so it is over all i j. And sigma star f is the product x sigma i minus x sigma j over the same i and j. So if you think about it, because sigma is a permutation, sigma is a bijection, right? Remember, symmetric group is the set of bijection of this set. Because it is a bijection, as i varies, over 1 to n or 1 to n minus 1 in this case, sigma i also varies. Similarly, sigma j also is an element of 1 to n. So, if you take an individual term in f that is translated to some other term, only changes will be negative signs as we have seen in this example. For example, x3 minus x1 x1 minus x3 became x3 minus x2. So, we, we must allow that in the, in the definition of f, we have xi minus xj, where i is strictly less than j always. So, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, right? 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. In f, you must, you never have a bigger index minus a smaller index. f is defined to be x i minus x j where i is strictly less than j. But once you do sigma star f, that will no longer be the case. Sometimes you have a bigger index minus smaller index, x2 minus x1. Because if i is less than j, certainly it is not true that sigma i is less than sigma j, that is not the case. But however, up, that is just a negative of if you have a bigger index minus smaller index, then that is negative of smaller index minus bigger index which appears in f. So, f is a product of some terms. Sigma star f will be product of same number of terms. But some of these terms, it will be the same terms with possibly negative sign. So, if you now accumulate all these negative signs, you might either have plus or minus as this example shows. You have three negative signs giving you minus f when sigma was 1, 3 when sigma tau was 1, 2, 3, you have only two negative signs, so that will give you f. So, sigma star f 
must be either f or minus f, minus f. The same terms are preserved up to a change of sign. So sigma star is either f or minus f. Let me say this is my proof. I won't go into a more formal proof, but I hope this is clear enough for you. So sigma star f is f or minus f. Next I want to do if sigma and tau are in Sn, what is sigma tau star f? This is my next question. Sigma tau is another permutation, right? So I can apply star of it. How is it related to sigma f, sigma star f and tau star f? Okay, I want to understand how is it related to this. So again, I, I will explain this by the example that we did. So take n equal to 3 and sigma was 1, uh, let's say sigma was 1, 3 and tau was 1, 2, 3. So what is sigma tau? So sigma tau we are now okay, we are, we are all uh, become comfortable hopefully with products of permutations, cycle uh, products. So here sigma tau will be 1 goes to 2 and 2 is not, uh, 2 is fixed by sigma so that is 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1 so that is 1, 2. So you close 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1 so 1, 2 is a cycle, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 3 so sigma tau is 1, 2 and what is 1 sigma tau star f? If you now do the calculation that we have done earlier it is x, so f was remember, I will write it again here for convenience, f was x1 minus x2, x1 minus x3, x2 minus x3. So sigma tau star f will be, I, I will just directly write x1 goes to 2 in this, so x2 and 2 goes to 1, so that is x1 minus x2 minus x1, 1 goes to 2. So x2 minus and 3 is fixed, so that's x2 minus x3, and x2 goes to 1, so that's and 3 is fixed, so that's x1 minus x3, right? I just look at the subscripts, which are the indices of these variables, and see where they go under sigma tau. So 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1. So the first one changes sign. The second one, 1 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3. So 2 x2 minus x3. This does not change sign. No change of sign. Here x2 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 3. So here also no change in sign. Right? And the, and the first one change in sign. Okay, now what is this? This is f minus f, right? Because there is one change of sign. So it is minus of x1 minus x2. The other two are fixed. So this is minus f. So sigma tau whole star, so this is sigma tau, first you multiply and then take star. On the other hand, what is tau star f? Tau star f was remember, we wrote that here, it is minus f, but uh, it is x2 minus, so it is f, but let me write down what we got, okay. So it is x2 minus x3. x2 minus x1, x3 minus x1. Right, x3 minus x1. Okay, so now let's apply. So we have, we have this. Let's apply sigma star to both sides. So sigma star of tau star f. What is this? See, when I apply sigma star, I simply change the subscripts by sigma. So, and sigma was 1, 3, right? So, x2 minus x3, 2 is fixed under sigma. So, it is x2 and 3 goes to 1. So, this is x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1. So, 2 goes to 2 and 1 goes to 3. So, this is x2 minus x3. 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3. 
so you have x1 minus x3 and if you now compare this with sigma tau whole star f okay so let's compare them both we have x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 x2 minus x3 x2 minus x3 so this term is common this term is common and we have x1 minus x3 and x1 minus x3 so we see that so they are equal they are same right so sigma so what we have is sigma tau whole star f is applying sigma star to tau star f so you start with f first apply tau star then apply sigma star to it so this is what we have in this example and i will now say this holds in general okay so let me quickly say this so in general we have and why is this what is the reason and the calculation is the following so what is sigma tau whole star f which is by definition remember we take x and we apply sigma tau of i minus x sigma tau of j remember again when i for a permutation sigma i defined sigma star f how did we define this let's go back to the definition of sigma star i start with f and each subscript i simply change by sigma right so i change the subscript by sigma x sigma i minus x sigma j here i am applying it to sigma tau so i change sig i by sigma tau j by sigma tau but now this is same as and the it the product is over this set i less than j i greater than equal to 1 j less than equal to n but sigma tau remember that it is a composition right sigma tau is the composition of sigma and tau the product in the product in the symmetric group the binary operation in the symmetric group is the uh, the composition of functions so this would be same as x or uh, x times tau of i x sub sigma of tau of i minus x sub sigma of tau of j i'm not doing anything in this step i'm just observing that sigma tau of i is sigma of tau of i sigma tau of j is sigma of tau of j but what is this this is applying sigma to something so this is sigma star of product 1 less than equal to i i less than j j less than equal to n of x tau i minus x tau j right because if i take this and apply sigma star applying sigma star is by definition applying sigma to each subscript so i am applying sigma to each subscript so this is sigma star of this but what is this so this is sigma star of this but what is this this is exactly tau star of product the same product xi minus xj right because originally you had xi minus xj you apply tau star to it and then you get this but this what is this this is just f so this is sigma star of tau star of f remember this is exactly what i have claimed here sigma tau whole star f is sigma star of tau star f okay so i don't need this uh, interior parenthesis so just me like okay so in general i have this 